Nothing says love quite like a cheeseburger, <laughs> wouldn't you say? I got these coupons from Carl's Jr. and it's got a heart on the top of it. It's kind of like a flyer that came in the bag. And it says bring this flyer in with the other half and they get to eat for free. And there's four coupons on here, but I think it's just so funny. Like, advertising, great job. <laughs> Nothing says romance and Valentine's Day quite like Carl's Jr. Speaking of, what are some of y'all doing for Valentine's Day? Jacob and I were trying to decide what we wanted to do. We think that Valentine's Day is kind of a silly event to celebrate. That's just us, because it's kind of like, you know, you tell your significant other or the person that you want to spend your life with, whatever, that you love them every single day, and I don't really feel like, and both of us kind of feel, like you don't really need one day to do that. Like, of course, it's nice to have a day where you, that's all you focus on, but you should be doing that every single day. And so we weren't really going to do anything. And then I had this epiphany. Like, as I was going to bed, I remembered that Valentine's Day is our cat Poncho's birthday. And we want to do something for him, but we don't really know. Obviously, like, if we try to bring people over and have, like, a little kitty party, nobody's really going to come because they're all going to want to do things with their significant others. So we might do something the day before, the day after, or something to kind of celebrate his birthday. Because he's turning five. We've had him for two years now. This is his his second birthday with us. Right, Pudgy? He's in the room with me. He's kind of starting to fall asleep because it's kind of kind of late. It's past his bedtime. Yeah. But we've been trying to decide what to do with all of that. And uh, lately, I've just been playing Pokemon non-stop because I'm trying to catch all of the legendaries in Omega Ruby. And it's, it's kind of crazy if any of you all are familiar or unfamiliar with how many legendaries you can catch. In each game, you know, with the respective one, you get the legendary that's on the front of the box. So either you get Kyogre or Grudon, and then they give you, they just gift Latias and Latios to you. And then by the end of the game, you can catch Rayquaza and Deoxys. If you keep your Master Ball, you can catch Deoxys. You don't have to worry about fighting him and killing him or her. I think it's genderless. Um, and then you can also find Heatran in the game. There are all of the, I'm going to call them the Regis Philbin Pokemon. It's Regice and Registeel and Regirock. And then if you get all of them with like the combination of different crap to get them, you can get Regigigas, which is also really cool. I still haven't been able to get Regigigas though because I can't figure out what time of day I'm supposed to go and I've gone at all hours to the area and I still can't find him. You can get um, Uxie, Me Spirit, and Azelf, and you need one copy of the game of Omega Ruby and of Alpha Sapphire because each game kind of corresponds with different Pokemon. Like, you get Lugia in Sapphire and you can get Ho-Oh and Ruby. And it, I decided recently, and I'm going to divulge a little more into my obsession, that I actually bought Sapphire. I owned Ruby and I bought Sapphire so that I can get all the legendaries. So you can even get like Suisun, Raikou, and Entei, but you need to have a certain Pokemon. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure you need to have Lugia from Sapphire and you need Ho-Oh from Ruby. And once you have both of them, then you can get all of the, the legendary dogs. You can get Cobalion, Terrakion, and Virizion, but those, those aren't game specific. You can get Palkia, Dialga, Garantia, like, there's just tons and tons of legendaries, and you, in, in a lot of these cases, you need both games in order to get them, so I did spend some of my money to be able to get both games, because I really want to try to catch all of the, all of the Pokemon. That's kind of my goal, and what I've been doing is I've been finding the one that's next in line for the Pokedex. I'll get enough eggs from the from the, um, the Pokemon daycare center, and I'll get as many eggs as, as needed for its evolutionary line. So, like, in, for instance, ch for Charmander, I've got three eggs and then cracked all of them, and then kept one inside of my um, my computer, and then I took the other two and evolved them into Charmeleon, Charizard, and then dropped those into the computer. So I literally have the entire evolutionary line, and I'm all the way up to Articuno. 
and I just need Moltres, so I'm playing again through X and Y. I'm playing through Y specifically because depending on what part of the game you start in, what you choose as your starter, that's what bird you'll get at the end. So I originally started with Fennekin, so my bird was Zapdos, and then I replayed again and I picked Chespin, and my bird was Articuno. And now I'm playing through, and I picked Froakie, and I'm supposed to get Moltres by the end. And then I'm evolving Dratini twice. I need to. I have two eggs, and I'm I'm evolving, and then I'm planning on having the whole Dratini line. And that's gonna be it for the one for the first 150. And I'm not planning on catching Mew anytime soon. But that's my goal is to try to catch literally all of the Pokemon. So I've been making that my project. I was talking to a friend about that the other day and he was saying that that's way too much work for him. But for me, it's it's fun. I don't really have too many other hobbies that I'm focusing on right now. Besides doing drag, which I'm still working on. Um, still waiting because I really want to get into gigs and I really want to like get into that. And so I'm still waiting to hear when that is a thing that I can do and I'm trying to get my makeup to a better level and it excites me to think that that could be a possibility because it's something that I'm really 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 interested in and I'm excited for season 7 of Drag Race because Jacob has agreed to do the mock cast with me and he and his brother and I are hopefully going to be talking about each episode week after week kind of just responding to everything and I'm excited for that. I'm excited to see these new girls and these new queens because the, a lot of them seem so fierce. I've been following a couple of them on Instagram like I follow Miss Kasha Davis. She's hilarious and I love her to pieces and I hope that she gets pretty far in the competition and we got to see Jasmine Masters. We got to see her at Club Velvet. She was just so Fierce. I loved her and I really think that she has the potential to get into the top three, top four. And I'm hoping that she wins the whole thing. She's going to be the one that I'm rooting for during this competition. And Violet, I really like from the video that they've released already from Logo of just the teaser of this series. And strangely enough, I'm really getting a attracted to Trixie's look. She was really outlandish and really overdrawn for me at first, and I really didn't care for her style or anything. The more that I've watched her, the more I'm like, I really, really like her. She's really fierce. So I can't wait to see, to see all that and to be able to react to everything. But back to, back to Pokemon, because there were a lot of things that I wanted to talk about in this podcast revolving, involving Pokemon, as I am. I did a video the other day about which type that I am and I really like the fire psychic type I think that's probably why I like Delphox so much because he is a fire psychic type and I took this quiz because I wanted to see like what type I would be and the result ended up that I was a poison type Pokemon and while I while that's interesting because it falls under the psychic line some of the analysis was kind of not matching for me and a lot of the questions that were in that quiz were really strange. I, I want to make my own quiz. I want to make my own what Pokemon type are you quiz because I feel like there were some that were in that that I was just really confused by and I wasn't sure how they corresponded with Pokemon at all. Like I feel like some of the questions that were on there were just random ads. Like let's just throw this in because it would be fun to put this question in like what type of food do you like? And some of them just were really weird, like steak and a side of bacon. Like who eats steak with a side of bacon? Like if you're gonna eat steak with bacon, it's gonna be filet mignon and you're gonna have the bacon wrapped around the steak. Like you're not gonna have a side of bacon. Who does that? That's trashy. You're not gonna go into Ruth Chris and be like, hi, I wanna get your best steak. And by the way, give me just a side of bacon. Like who the fuck does that? It's weird. So that, though. No. The whole test just had me really confused the whole time and I feel like I was just really I wanted to be funnier but the quiz threw me off so much that I just didn't know how to respond to some of it it was a fun quiz nonetheless but I was still just really confused by some of those questions and I don't know if I necessarily agree that I'm poison type I think if I were to be anything that were out of the ordinary that I wouldn't pick would be like electric slash dark because I feel like that 
kind of aligns better with my personality from what the quiz was aiming towards. And there were some questions on that stupid test that were so, like, I wonder what this could possibly be. Like, you enjoy gardening. Gee, I wonder what that question could be leading towards. Hmm. I bet that it's fire. I bet that it's fire type Pokemon that this is leading to. So yeah, that was that was a, a journey. I am uploading another video. I don't know if it'll be before this mock cast or if it'll be after. But I'm definitely uploading a video about which Pokemon you are specifically. And that has to do with the number of a couple different things. There, were, there was math involved. And it's kind of late, so I'm not really processing what it entirely it was. But it is going to be up. And, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to upload that video. I still need to edit it, as far as today is concerned. But, speaking of Pokemon, and, and Pokemon numbers and all that, there was a new pack released, and it's called Primal Forces, and we actually got a whole bunch of them a few days early. I uploaded a small daily vlog style video where I talked about it because we were walking through Target, and then all of a sudden, I just see this display, and it's it's the I'm New display. And there were all these cards that were there, and I'm like, what are all these? These aren't supposed to be out. And they had artwork from Kyogre and Grudon and Gardevoir, and who was the other one? I don't remember the other Pokemon that was on it. And I was so confused because I was like, what is this? And I looked closer and realized it was a Primal Forces deck. Primal Forces deck came out on the 4th, but this deck, this whole series, it was like this whole I'm New display was out on like January 29th maybe it was super super early and definitely was not supposed to be out yet but we bought a ton of them I bought 10 packs and with no shame I opened all of them up and I, I had two EX cards which was nice and the rest of them were all I really just liked the artwork with this new series that came out and the only thing that I don't like is that it's labeled XY and this whole new series is supposed to be based in Hoenn and in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. And I understand that XY was like the game that came right before this and it's what all the series are based off of. But even with X and Y, a lot of the a lot of the Pokemon that were in that series were not even available in X and Y. Like some of those cards I've found their respective Pokemon more frequently in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. And I never even saw them once in X and Y. And to mislabel this series was a little annoying to me. Not like they could put Oros Primal Forces deck. Like, I don't know how well that would translate out. But I feel like to label it X and Y was a little stupid. And whatever. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not in charge of marketing for Pokemon. If I was, I would not call it X and Y. I would try to come up with a different kind of name for it. So... Yeah, that's a thing. And then lately, on top of just trying to find more of the cards and playing the game just nonstop to get all the legendaries, I have been watching Sailor Moon Crystal. This is something I meant to do a long time ago, but I knew myself enough that because the episodes were so scattered that I needed to have all of them at the same time. I couldn't wait like two weeks because I think it's the first and third Saturday or Sunday of each month is when the new episode comes out and another one should be coming out in the next couple of days. I don't know when I'm going to upload this. Hopefully it'll be within close proximity to today's actual date. But there should be a new one coming out really really soon and I'm excited for that. But I watched all of the original. I marathoned through that and I love Usagi and her story and I loved the transformations and everything about it. It was such a great show and I wasn't really allowed to watch it very much as a kid because I I loved it and I loved collecting the dolls. I, I had all of them. I had Sailor Moon, Sailor Mars, Ver um, Venus, Mercury, Jupiter, and I even had Tuxedo Mask. I'm pretty sure I had a Queen Barrel doll. Like I literally had all of them and I thought they were so cool. And my mom thought that it would make me too feminine so she took them away <laughs> and she put them in the cabinet that was above our refrigerator and every once in a while I would sneak up there and pull them down but she would sell them and one by one they all disappeared until all that was left was Sailor Moon and I think Mercury and Venus were the last couple ones and I think after a while she just threw away Venus and 
I don't ever remember her selling that one, but I do remember she sold the rest of them, and it was really upsetting for me because those dolls are worth money now, I think. Um, and on top of it, it was just something I liked, and to throw away something that your child likes because you think it'll make them too feminine, like, that's stupid. And I don't know, I would never do that. I mean, I, I obviously have very different ideas of what childhood is and how a child should be and all that than my parents did, but whatever. Uh, yeah, so I marathoned all of the original, and then I started watching Sailor Moon Crystal, and I noticed that it was much different, but in a really good way. It didn't feel like it was so outlandishly different that I couldn't enjoy it. I really liked it on the same level, and a lot of those filler episodes from the original, I didn't miss. There were some plot points that were in the in Crystal that I really, I really, really liked, like introducing the idea that Usagi and Mamoru knew each other's identities as Tuxedo Mask and Sailor Moon early on in the series, that it was something that they kind of shared and had this bond over. And I really, really liked that plot point and them realizing that they loved each other so much earlier. Because it took Usagi fucking forever to realize that she loved Mamoru. And I liked that Rei is not such a bitch to Usagi. In the original, she was really, really mean to her. And I understand that that kind of helped her grow as a human being and as a sailor scout. It really helped her become someone new and, and Mars really pushed her to be a better person. But I, she was always just so mean and there wasn't really a point for it. And so I liked that Mars was so much nicer to Usagi and Crystal. And um, what else was there? Just introducing those scouts sooner than what they did was really nice because in the original it took a very long time in order for them to introduce all the scouts so I, I liked all that and I ranked them originally from the original series I ranked them but watching Crystal I decided to kind of combine my thoughts from both series and I rank them in my top five and I chose Beryl as my number one because Beryl is just really really fierce there's something so cool about her especially in the original she's just really menacing and evil and really cool and then in Crystal there's something very desperate about her like she really really needs to find the silver crystal but then you realize that she has these hidden motives and she wants to use the crystal for herself she doesn't want to give it to Materia and I loved that, that whole plot was so intriguing to me and it really made her such a more in-depth character. And then my number two is Makoto, which is Jupiter. And I, I've always really loved Sailor Jupiter. When I was a kid, I really liked her, I thought she was cool and growing up I knew that she was my favorite but I didn't really remember why until I started watching the show again. Her powers are so awesome, especially in Crystal, that she has more than just Supreme Thunder. That is one thing that I don't like about the original is they w they use the same moves over and over and over and over again and there was never any variance in it and it took so long in the original to do their attacks like it was Supreme and then some clips of thunder coming, of lightning coming down and then going into her tiara, thunder, and then it would spray out or, you know, fire, and then it would show Ray, and she's like putting her hands into like a gun shape and then a little fireball forms and then she'd scream out soul and then it would blow off. And it just took so long to do the powers that it wasn't interesting. And the way that Crystal tackled all that was so much better. And her powers are really cool. Just Makoto is a badass. She takes no shit from anybody, and I love that. And then my number three is Rey, who is Sailor Mars. And I really, really, really liked her in, in the original. I love her in Crystal. I think it's so cool that she fights in freaking stilettos. Like, who the fuck is Mars? She does whatever she wants. And her transformation in Crystal is really well done. I think hers is my favorite in Crystal. Her and Jupiter both have the coolest transformations. And I again, like I just like that Mars pushes people to be better. And she just is a very interesting character to me. She's very well written. And then she's got two freaking ravens that fly around with her. And they are the names of Mars's moons, Phobos and Deimos. And that is just brilliant. Brilliant writing. And then my number four is Luna. 
I just love how sassy Luna is. I love how she takes none of Usagi's crap. I like that she's just this really on point character and all her dialogue is so funny to me. Whenever Usagi's going on and on and on about something, Luna's just kind of sitting there silently judging her and then we'll just call her an idiot right then and there. And I, I just love how dry she her humor is and I don't know. I don't know what it is about Luna that just really strikes a chord. And then also we just have a little black kitty too. We put a little, I cut out a piece of paper, a little a little yellow crescent moon and I taped it to Poncho's forehead. He was so upset afterwards. He was okay for the picture. He like posed and he was a good boy. And then as soon as I dropped him, he scratched his face until it came off and then he ran away. And he was not happy about it. He was so unhappy with us making him into Luna. I thought he was cute. And then my fifth is Usagi, Sailor Moon, because she's the star of the show, and I I really struggled with putting Usagi on the list. So I've gone back and forth with her. There are moments where she's really selfish and immature, and then she has really strong moments where she really displays that she's a great leader. I think that they corrected a lot of problems from the original with Crystal. Is very early on in the series, she has all of her character flaws and problems and she grows and overcomes them where in the original Usagi was just kind of dumb the entire time like when it got to the very end and they were fighting against the Double D sisters and all of the Sailor Scouts were one by one dying Usagi just kind of gave up and she was willing to give them the silver crystal and no matter how many times that they gave a fake image of Mamoru being killed Usagi still thought that it was him and fell into the trap each and every single time and kind of I feel like Usagi disappointed her friends for the first half of that last episode of the original. For any of you who haven't seen it, they go to the Arctic where they go to a place called D Point where it's the entrance into the Dark Kingdom and they go in there and Queen Beryl asks who will go against the Sailor Scouts and then the DD sisters who are aptly named because their breasts are gigantic and they're wearing all of nothing say that they'll challenge the Scouts and they show up and they start to fight them and they give this fake image of Tuxedo Mask hanging from these green vines and Usagi believes that it's him and she needs to go save him and almost dies in the process, like they almost capture her. Then Jupiter goes to go fight them and they try to kill her with electric powers, which she already has electric powers, so she basically reverses it, kills one of them, and then dies in the process. And Usagi has this meltdown where she just doesn't know what to do and she says she'll give away the crystal and and she is kind of coerced by the others to keep moving forward because they have to defeat Beryl and Natalia. And then it does this really sad montage where the Sailor Scout turns around in their normal girl outfit and they kind of wave to like a white background and then disappear. And then Ami dies and then Venus dies. Um, Minako is her Japanese name. And then Rei dies. And it's all really, really sad. And this whole time Usagi's just having these meltdowns and I just got so angry with her. But there were some really strong qualities that she had that really made me not hate her. And then when it got to Crystal, a lot of that immaturity really faded away. Around episode 6 or 7, she really started to grow as a character. And I think they really corrected a lot of those problems that I had with Usagi in the original. Where she was just too selfish and immature. And I like that they kind of corrected that and fixed all of that, that issue. Because it was a really big issue for me that she was so just stupid is the right word so stupid in the original so they they fixed a lot of stuff about Usagi for me and then she made my my list my top five but if any of you guys watch Sailor Moon I would really like to hear your top five and, and who your top five are if you are only familiar with the dub and you only know them by their American names that's totally fine I'll probably be able to figure out who they are um, I have only watched the sub because I really wanted to stay as close to the original as possible. And while there are some translation issues that obviously occur between translating something from Japanese to English, it's closer than the dub which really changed things so dramatically. And if you don't know where you can watch Crystal or the original, both of them are on Hulu and I know Hulu is like $8 a month. 
but I feel like it's it's worth it just for those two shows. Jacob and I have Netflix and we only got Hulu because Sailor Moon was on it and there were a couple other shows that we don't get to watch that are, are not on Netflix that we can watch and it's inconvenient because there are um, there are stupid advertisements that happen and sometimes there are two which is annoying enough it's like we pay eight dollars why are we getting advertisements at all like we should get no advertisements that's kind of Netflix whole shtick you know you pay the money and you don't have to worry about advertisements when you want television shows so it's, I guess maybe just Hulu wants more of our money I don't know if there's like an ad free Hulu but I'm not willing to pay more money to get an ad free Hulu because it's already like eight dollars a month <laughs> you know and eight dollars that's like eight dollar cheeseburgers you know like that's time that's precious money um but did y'all know that there's like an app that is on i only have it for the iphone and i'm sure it's a smartphone app too it's a sailor venus game and i've been playing it just non-stop it's called silver crystal i think or silver crystal something i'm not really sure it basically it's a fan-made game it's not like an official game and it's it's kind of loosely based off of the arcade game that is in Sailor Moon and it, it's a game where you are primarily Sailor V you collect crystals, these blue crystals through the the round it's kind of like Temple Run I would say but it's um, it's 2D, it's not 3D so you are um, you're running on a side scroller you have three hearts and then you have one drop save so if you fall in between the cracks and if you die you'll have like one save that you can just keep going if you fall through the cracks and die more than that then it's game over and then if you lose all your hearts then it's game over and there are some bad guys that run across the screen that you can fight and they have that big like dinosaur skeleton at the end of each run so you'll do like the first one it'll be like 45 seconds worth of running and then you'll have like a minute and a half and then two minutes and each time you get to the end you transform and you do that cool little thing that was in the game where Sailor Venus had um, like that light that surrounded her in the arcade game and then you do a special move and then defeat the bad guy. Once you get 10,000 crystals you can unlock Sailor Moon and I have unlocked her and I've been playing as her for a while and she's not much different like it's literally the exact same moveset but it's just a novelty of having it I can't figure out how to get the other levels there are three levels on here and each one has a different star rating on them like the, the main one that you start with has a one star rating and then a two star and then a three star but I can't figure out how to get those two they won't let me select them so I don't know if maybe just the levels are inaccessible until there's a new update or maybe I have to like defeat a number of monsters that is not specified but it's a really cool game you guys should check it out it's totally free and I think it's worth it. It's fun if you're a fan of the the series and if you want something kind of just to mindlessly play, it's it's kind of a fun little, I don't want to say a time waster because I don't feel like I'm actually wasting my time. I feel like it's time well spent. Um, if you just have free time, you would like to just play a game that you don't really have to pay too much attention to. You don't have to worry about growing crops or collecting things every three hours and all that shit. It's, it's fun. And I appreciate this game, especially, you know, just being so into it now. Because my mom didn't let me get into it. She didn't let me get into Sailor Moon. She didn't let me get into Pokemon. Like, she took away things. Both my parents did. They were very adamantly against certain things that I enjoyed. And now that I'm an adult, I'm like, well, I'm going to catch up on doing all of it. Like, I'm going to play Pokemon games. And I'm going to collect the cards. And I'm going to watch Sailor Moon. And I'm an adult. And I don't have to be handled anymore. So, it, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I'm like, I appreciate this game because I never really got to enjoy Sailor Moon as a kid. So I'm enjoying it now as an adult. And, um, yeah. So what, I, I've asked a lot of different questions throughout this little mock cast. What are you planning on doing for Valentine's Day? What is your top five Sailor Moon characters if you have a list? And then I really would also like to know um, if you have like a favorite Pokemon and that is gonna be it I'm still kind of trying to get used to this whole mock cast idea it's a little int intimidating doing something brand new and adventurous but this is something that again I think I will really thrive and enjoy doing I already like doing it 
a ton now, even though this is only my first one. I really like it. So if you have any like thoughts on what I could improve on or anything you want me to talk about for for future mock casts, I don't know if this particular one will be available um, on SoundCloud. I think I'm gonna wait till I get kind of more in the groove of things. So this is a YouTube exclusive. That's kind of exciting. And that is going to be all for today, because i got to go to bed and got to be up kind of early tomorrow. And Poncho already left the room. He went to the other one. <laughs> I don't even know what he's doing right now. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching and listening, and see you all next time. Bye!